Lake and river fishing with beach worms. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne. Today I'm down by my local lake because the surf is a mess. It's blowing a gale, the waves are huge, but there's always other options and beach worms are amazing bait, whether you're off the beach or in a lake or a river. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some really handy basic tactics for catching beautiful eating fish in your local lake or river. Make sure that you like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, that makes a big difference. Let's get started. So I've come down to my lo local lake. I've kind of found a spot really that um, is out of the wind and I'm casting into the main channel that runs into the lake, which is always a good place to fish in most lakes, most coastal lakes. I've just got a couple of little flick rods. This one has eight pound mono on it and eight pound fluorocarbon leader. Just a tiny little ball sinker down to a swivel. And then I've got a leader of about 40, 50 centimetres to a long shank hook. Same type of hook that I use when I'm fishing off the beach because really I'm expecting to catch mainly brim and whiting, possibly flathead, trevally like worms as well. There's a few different things, even mullet. So I brought down two of these little rods. I've also got a just one sand spike or rod holder so I can chuck one line out and then just hold the other one. I brought a net, a keeper net and also a, a long handled prawning net as well just to help me net any fish because I've got to stand out here in the water. The channel is not too far from where I'm standing. I can actually see the edge of where the weeds meet the sand bottom. It's probably only 15 metres I really need to cast um, just to get out beyond the weeds. The worms I caught today were not huge but certainly perfect for fishing in a lake or river and these are cracking bait. So I'm fishing in the lake but really put, putting the baits on exactly is the same as if you're off the beach. You see this worm is nice and li lively, he's tr trying to bite me with his black, oh, I love it when their fangs come out that, like that. Whoa! You can see his big black fangs coming out near my thumb. Yo, man, that looks like a spider's fangs when they come out. But um, he's eating my hook. So he must have been hungry. He wanted to eat a hook. <laughs> and I'm feeding him all the way up the hook. Just going to break it off there. So he's just got a lovely little piece of worm uh, for bait. Beautiful piece of fresh Aussie beach worm. Um, I've, spoke, I've, heard a few, I've had a few comments lately of people from around the world with different types of worms that they get, which is really interesting. I'd love to travel sometime and actually do a full-on worm, uh, you know, exploration and uh, find different worms around the world. Try and find where the biggest, meanest worms are. So I'm going to chuck this out. It'll be interesting to see. The tide is, the current is still running out. The tide's actually changed. It was low tide maybe two hours ago but I can see that the current is heading out. So eventually the water will switch and the tide will start to come in a little bit, but I'm just gonna let this roll along with the tide. I'll walk out here, I expect it's gonna get a little bit muddy, so I don't really wanna keep going too much further because I'll, I'll sink into the sludge. So it's gonna give this a little, a little flick. Now actually, I got out a really long way because you know, as I've mentioned in my beach fishing videos, Beach worms are such a aerodynamic bait, they're easy to cast a long way. Just going to set this drag a little bit. Where is my line? Okay, so... That's rod number one. Hopefully he's going to do the job. And... I'll let any fish on that one, hook themselves hopefully. Mm, I'm just looking out there, it's not that deep out there but that's all right. It's good territory for brim and whiting. You would probably catch luteric on worms as well. Um, I've caught plenty of luteric on worms before and they, uh, they exist in abundance in our estuary systems. Oh, I dropped a bit of worm. What's that? That's a big school of fish there. Something scared a whole bunch of fish. The water just went a little bit wild right here. There's some, definitely some fish there. 
Not that I'm going to cast there because they're kind of over the weed bank. I reckon there's a big school of fish. How about I chuck my bait in there? I'm not going to fish there just to see if I can disturb the fish. They are just over here, about 10 or so metres in front of me. So I'm just going to... Nah, it didn't disturb anything. Although I can actually see swirls in the water, interestingly enough. It's definitely the, the water seems quite alive. Am I getting a nibble, am I? It's just mid-afternoon at the moment. Well, actually a little bit later than mid-afternoon. Five to six. You know, the beaches are just out of control today. Really big waves. The waves are supposed to be getting up to four metres plus. And I'm protected from the wind here, but it's really blowing a strong southerly. I could have found somewhere to fish. It wasn't impossible to fish off the beach, but just much more pleasant coming to the lake um, and I know I can catch a good feed here as well so you've always got options you're not limited you know and that's a good point you know you don't really want to waste your time you know if the ocean's really rough there's lots of harbours and rivers and lakes certainly where I used to live in Sydney there's an abundance of those sort of places to fish and up and down the coast as well I had a couple of tiny nibbles a second ago when you're doing this type of fishing, oftentimes it's a matter of waiting till a fish actually just finds your bait. Oh, I had a couple of little tiny pecks on that one then. So it's either a matter of a fish finding your bait or, you know, just casting in a few different spots uh, until you hopefully land near some fish. Yeah, something's pecking at that one. Nothing massive by the looks. Yeah, I think that's obviously a very small fish. I'm going to wind this one out and chuck it in and chuck it out again because I did have a couple of tiny little um, bites. It's going to walk out a little bit. Okay, well actually, believe it or not, I've got no bait. The, the tiny little pecks that I had have um, cleaned off my bit of worm. Might not have much left on the other rod either. Now I may leave this one out and swap over, go and wind my other line in because it's definitely had a few bites but nothing major. So I better check the bait on this one. So some of my bait's been taken. I'll just top it up a little bit. So really the type I'm of fishing I'm doing is very light. Just using a small sinker, light line, small running sinker. You can see my sinker just um, is running on the main line. It's just loose, running down to a swivel. And then um, put my bit of worm on. This sort of place is really good for taking your kids. Super safe, family friendly. You can uh, bring a bit of food, some food and drinks if you want, and relax and camp on the edge of the bank. Okay, I'm going to flick it slightly. Oh, that one's getting a few little nibbles. We don't want the little nibbles though, we want the big nibbles. Okay, so I'm a fair way out in the channel there. Yeah, it's getting more little pecks. Might check this bait as well. See if they've knocked it off. I think I might set my drag fairly light because um, if I get a good run, just, just light enough so there's enough pressure to set a hook. But if I'm walking along the bank and fishing with this one, then I can um, hear it if I get a bite. Okay, so I'll put you there. I'm just going to walk up to the left just a fraction. Having a cast up here near where all these fish are making a commotion. Whoa. 
it's always best to wear water shoes because in these sorts of situations you still can get oysters and sharp rocks so I've got some you know rubber type water shoes that I'm wearing which means I don't have to be too concerned about where I tread in fact there's an oyster just there and I can see a few yabby holes in here so if I, if I had a pump with me and I wanted some yabbies for bait I could just suck a few out fish in the water. Not sure what they are. I can see their fins coming out of the water. Just they're just on top of the weeds there. Oh, I've got a fish. In fact, look at this. Whatever this is, is pulling line. Sugar. Look at that. The only thing is I've got a big weed bank in front of me. I've got to get whatever this is. You know what I actually think? I think it's possibly a flathead. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to be really careful because this is super light line. And if it's a flathead and it swallowed it, very easy for it to you to get off. Hopefully it's not a stingray. I'm not quite sure. It may want to take a run. Oh, I mean, yep, here it goes. What is that? Is it a stingray? Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's a flipping stingray, would you believe? That's not the target species. He's right here at my feet. Even you get these in the surf, but you also get them in the in the lakes as well. Look at that, he's just swum over the top of my worm like a vacuum cleaner. So I just need to gently remove the hook and release him back into the wild. I can see the spikes on his tail. There's two spikes on that tail at the back. You can see the two barbs. My line's sort of going underneath him. Ooh. Yeah, got to avoid the spikes on a stingray. We just had Samson the stingray. Um, a number of people have told me that they like eating stingray. I have, at, so far I've never tried it. <laughs> I will have to try it at some point just so I know what it's like. I'm getting a few little nibbles, constantly getting little nibbles, but I'm just waiting for the big fish to come. Oh, here comes the sun. You. That's pretty much exactly where I caught that last stingray, but we'll see if something else is out there. It's doing the same thing as that last stingray. Couldn't be another stingray, surely. Feels like it. It's heavy. Come on. It's stuck to the bottom. Might have to try and break it. Really weird. Come on, come on, come on, come my way. 
Surely it hasn't gone round a rock or something. I oh, know, here it comes. I just moved it a bit. I'm moving it. It's not wanting to come. Monster of the lake. <laughs> Look at my rod. It is bad. Come here. Oh, it's like I'm dragging a log across the bottom. All right, w walk forward, wind some. What is this? Is it a stingray? What is it? Okay. I'm making a few inches at a time. My light line's not breaking. It's not even running or anything. Okay, so it's coming my way now. Maybe I foul hooked it. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, it's a stingray hook by the tail. Now that's going to be an interesting one to get the hook off because the tail's where the spikes are. He's trying to whack my thing with his spike. Okay, I'm going to put him upside down. Oh, got the hook out. I just had to wedge him with this little log because I didn't want to get his spike in my fingers. So I'm just going to put him in the water here and watch him swim away. Here he is. Oh well, that's two casts with this rod, two stingrays. But I got my bait back. So I've got my worm bait intact. I'll toss it back out again. But I won't toss in the same spot. Okay. See what happens this time. It could it be three? Could it be three stingrays in a row? That's the question. I think if it is three stingrays in a row, I'll be moving along the bank a bit to a different location. It bit the same as the other two. And I have a pretty good feeling that it's the same thing. This one's a bit bigger. It's another stingray, but slightly bigger this time. So that's three casts, three stingrays. <laughs> How exciting. I've walked along the channel a little bit because and I don't really want to catch any stingrays seem to be a lot around. So I've come along the, the uh, hedge here. This particular lake has shallow sandbars with a channel in the centre and then on the other side of the lake is the same situation. You'd, you'd walk out in water. I'm up to my knees just here but then it gets deeper only about 20 metres out. So all I've done is walked out into the lake really so that I'm able to cast and land in the channel or where the shallower water transitions into the channel. It's a really good place to fish 
in pretty much every lake and river system. A lot of good fish are caught in places like this. So I'm just baiting up again. I've got to retie another hook because um, of one of the altercations with a stingray. I'm just going to toss a worm bait out here and then fix my other line up. And hopefully the stingrays are not down here in abundance as well. Landed right in the middle of the channel then. Just see if there's some big fish hanging around out there. I am getting a bite. Oops, that's a bit more of a bite. In fact, that oh, pulled that quite hard then. But I don't think he's hooked himself. It more, looked more like the type of bite that I'm looking for. But I think I probably just lost my bait. I definitely had a bite though. So I better check the bait. Oh, I got one. Okay. Maybe I had it all along and I didn't realise. It's definitely not a stingray. <laughs> Feels more like a brim actually. Pulling quite hard. Doesn't feel like a baby. Might even need the net. To wait and see. Ooh! It, no way, you're kidding me. You are kidding. <laughs> what have I got? No, 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 you know what it is. I actually should get the net because then I, I won't, technically I won't lose, I shouldn't lose it. It's got a lot of energy though, still. Oh, come here. This is quite, quite a large tailor. Look at that. You can see I've got my keeper net in my net as well. Do you know, that tailor has whacked my bait on the way in. It's a good sized tailor actually. So that's another different species on the old beach worm. It's going to grab him. He fought hard on six pound line. Look at this guy. This tailor, it's quite a, quite a solid tailor in the lake. I was winding my worm bait in and he nailed it because we know that tailor or bluefish love a moving bait. But he's actually a really good size for eating. He's pretty thick, pretty chunky. I'm holding on to him pretty tightly. Certainly a, health, a healthy fish but not what I was expecting to catch on the worm. However, I have caught them on, on beach worms before. So while it wasn't something I was expecting to catch, I'm happy to catch it. Just a nice size for eating, but I actually might, I might even slab him up for bait off the beach. I'm not sure. I'll decide later. Oh, look at my other rod, sugar. Uh, it's got a fish on it for sure. <sighs> just going to, um, I just want to keep the pressure on this. Hopefully, it's not a stingray like in the other spot, but it's not really running right now, so it, it could be a stingray. We'll just see how it feels. Another thing with a bit of weight in it. So I'm getting a few bites on the worms, but we'll see what this one is. He's coming in now. 
It certainly pulled a bit of line initially. What have I got here? I might need the net again. Ah. Salvatore Stingre. <laughs> Whoa. But I don't want him to sting me, that's for sure. So I've got my worm bait out of his mouth. I'm just going to let this guy go for a little runner and I'll chuck my line out again. Okay, let's see what's next. I just caught that tailor and thankfully it was it, it it attacked my bait as I was winding it in and you know the hook was in the right in the corner of its jaw but I still checked my line to make sure that there was no fraying because their teeth are so sharp they fray your line or they cut through it so easily I wanted to make sure that there was no fraying on the line before I throw it back out again and there was no fraying at all which was great. Actually I'm going to toss out this way. And prior to catching that tailor, I'd had a good bite on my rod, probably a brim or a whiting, by the way, bit, but it didn't hook up and then when I was winding my line in, the tailor took it. Hello, look. Oh, what have I got? Oh, I got off whatever it was. Did I did it? I don't know. No, I have it. It's not a stingray, I don't think. Oh, what have I got here? I might need my net. Oops, I'll grab the net. Oh, come back here. Not a massive fish, but I'm, net I'm going to net it anyway. There you go, look at that whiting. Woohoo! Beautiful. That's what we were looking for, really. Let's um, just stick that net in the ground. And reach in and grab him. So there you go, look at that. A nice little whiting on uh, beach worm in the lake. Be good to catch some bigger ones than that because I think looking at him, he's borderline. So I'm going to let him go. He could do with being a little bit bigger. He would be 10, 20. Probably 27, but I'll let him go. Okay. This type of fishing is really enjoyable. It's a lot of fun, very safe, and you can absolutely catch some beautiful fish doing this. I've just spent a little bit of time out here on the lake as opposed to the beach. So far I've um, landed five stingrays, which is un unusual. Uh, I don't think I've ever caught five stingrays in one session in the lake before. Generally a lot more just brim and whiting. I've got a really good sized tailor. Uh, and I just caught a, a whiting that was probably legal, but I let it go. And, you know, it's still a beautiful time of the evening now. I still have the opportunity to catch a couple more fish. But, you know, when you fish in a lake and you use light line and quality bait, and you fish in these areas where the sandbars transition into a deeper channel, you, you're going to catch fish probably 95 times out of 100. You'll actually get a feed. And the sinkers I'm using would be only about half an inch or one centimetre across the little ball sinkers. Just a tiny little ball sinker above a swivel with a worm hook. 
I'm getting a bite over there, but just we'll just watch it for a second. Just had a couple of boom booms. See that? Whack whack whack. It's like brim bites. See that? But they're not running off with it. It's just whacking it. Come on, swallow it. Take it for a run. I might just go and pick it up. My tackle box today, um, I've got my jacket, but my tackle box consists of that. It's just a peanut butter container, two or three sinkers, a couple of swivels, and um, I had just had a few worm hooks in there. I've lost a couple of hooks, um, but really you don't need much. I mean, you bring maybe three little sinkers, three hooks, a couple of swivels, and that's, that's it, a tiny little thing. I've got a jacket on because it's a little bit cold, but I just keep this in my pocket. Actually, also in my pocket, I have some fluorocarbon. This is eight pound fluorocarbon leader. So I use that as my leader if I needed to tie on a new leader. So really that's all I have. I've got two beautiful little rods, one sand spike with a keeper net and a uh, net, a landing net so that it, when I walk out here and stand in the water, I've pretty much got everything I need. And I'm surrounded by pelicans. There's a couple of swans out here. I just had a few bites on this line. They didn't take all the bait, interestingly enough. Still some bait on there, so I'll chuck it back out again. Those pelicans, they're pretty massive birds. They look like they're about the size of a turkey. Just felt like a little brim biting my line then. Yep, getting a couple of knocks now. You're always waiting for them to pick it up and run with it so that you can set the hook. Someone made a comment on one of my videos recently that it would be a good idea to put some marks on my rod, like for example every 10 centimetres, so that I actually have something on my rod that I can use to measure fish with if I'm out in the middle of nowhere. It's actually a great idea. I haven't done it yet. I've actually got so many rods, I probably have to do it to all of my fishing rods. Uh, but it is a good idea to get like a bit of white paint or, you know, something that's going to stay there than when I'm out there, because I don't always have something to measure fish with. So, good idea. Oh, I'm getting a bite. Oh! That was good, wasn't it? No, I got him. Oh! Had a fish. It was a good bite, though. Hmm. Have I got much bait left? No, it took most of my worm bait. It actually felt like it could have been a good whiting or something. So, um, oh, we're going to whack another worm bait on. Get it back out in that same spot. I've had a few bites out there. I always keep a bit of sand on the worm so that I've got grip when I'm putting them on. You know, Australian beach worms are amazing creatures. They really are amazing creatures and a fantastic bait. They're not a messy bait. You get a little tiny bit of blood off them, but they're, they're really not messy at all. They're easy to handle. They're really aerodynamic, so you're able to make long casts if you need to. And I've had quite a few comments uh, in my videos from people all around the world about different types of worms that they get. I find that really interesting. I'd love to be able to travel sometime and um, 
you know, target trying to catch all sorts of different worms that you get around the world or even find or try and see if the same beach worms exist in, in places like South Africa uh, in America. They're awesome and you catch so many different fish on them and you can, they've got quite a few different applications. My father used to use them deep sea fishing and used to catch snapper and trevally, believe it or not. Okay, and I do have my beach worm in course which has just been revised. It now will have 18 videos in the new updated version of my beach fishing masterclass plus my, my book, How to Catch Australian Beach Worms as well. And you can find that on my website. I think I just saw this rod. Yep, it's getting a bit of a nibble. Yeah, something's whacking it. Yeah, I think I need to chuck this one out. It doesn't look like something big, but maybe I'll just pick this one up just for a second. I think something might have picked it up and is swimming, swimming towards me because the line's gone slack. No, it felt strange, it just went really slack. Yep, not really got any bait left on it. So, I'm just going to chuck this one back out because it's just a really good time of the afternoon right now. Lots of fish splashing around in the water. Okay, so see if I can add to my tally. I've already got a nice sized fish that would feed probably four people. So that's good. And then I'll plan to get back out on the beach as soon as possible to um, have another session out there. Just going to, um, just some little nibbles, wasn't it? I think. Oh, just had a bit of a bite then on this one. That was promising. I had a couple of good tugs. Come on. There might be more Taylor out there. Yep, got it, I think. Oh, have I or not? Oh, that was really interesting. I should have hooked that fish. Something was going on out there. Oh, still got my bait. That rod's getting a bite now. Yep, still getting a bite. Yep. What is going on? Is there any bait left? Oops, yep, there is. Pretty small it was. <laughs> there you go. So it's another whiting, obviously too small. It's been a really worthwhile afternoon down by the lake. It's so beautiful, just as the sun's setting now. I caught uh, a nice sized tailor, which I can eat for dinner if I want and share with a few people. Caught a couple of whiting, a bunch of stingrays. It's been awesome. So thank you so much for joining me again in this adventure and I'll see you very soon in the next video.